choose your lures based on what you're learning on, on a body of water on, on that. Gosh, on that day. Holy cow, that's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. And they want the frog. They want the frog. Come on now. Come on now. Holy cow. Holy cow. What's going on y'all and welcome to Uncut. I love this series because the cameras are rolling, I'm going bass fishing, and whatever happens, good or bad, is caught on camera for you guys completely uncut. Today's episode has so many big fish catches, you're not going to want to miss a single second. But before we get into the fishing and of course the teaching, I want to talk about an awesome charity I'm involved with that is giving away a fully expenses paid fishing trip with me that y'all can win along with an $80,000 brand new Skeeter Bass Boat. The charity I have partnered with is Bass for Beckers, a muscular dystrophy foundation that raises money to send kids with MD to an MD specific camp. I am super passionate about this charity and we are selling raffle tickets down in the video description below. So if you pick up your raffle ticket in the month of April, you are entered into winning the fully expenses paid. We're going to fly you to Texas to fish with me. Or if you don't win the, the monthly prize of April and you buy tickets in May or June, July, they have awesome monthly prizes as well as the yearly prize, which everybody has entered into. And that is a fully outrigged brand new Skeeter Bass boat in today's economy, probably worth like $90,000. So we're trying to raise as much money as possible. And so if you can get yourself a few raffle tickets down in the video description below. Now let's talk about today's conditions. Today I get the chance to fish an awesome private lake that a subscriber of mine, Mike, invited me to. And let me tell you, there's some big Big bass in here. It is springtime, the bass should be active, shallow, and feeding, and so I got here early in the morning and started my day throwing a topwater, the Mock Baits Patroller. This bait is fantastic for covering water and finding good groups of fish, but after about 10 to 15 minutes, I didn't get a single bite on the patroller, even though I knew there were bass in the areas that I was throwing it, and so I decided to make the switch to a topwater frog, and that's where we're going to begin our uncut. Gosh, there he is. Yes, sir, get in here. Get in here. What a way to officially start the uncut portion of the video. Look at that, pop and pad perch, top of the mouth, probably a little male sitting on a bed up there, I'd guess. Beautiful little farm pond bass. Okay, so like I said in that little intro there, made a whole bunch of casts with the patroller, didn't catch nothing, and that was like my third cast with the topwater frog. So, uh, you know what? It is the spawn. It is the spawn, so I need to fish uh, Need to fish that area again. In case there's a female, a female bass. But I'm not going to catch it with a, with a cast like that. Oh gosh, or a cast like that. Come on, Tyler. Come on now. There we go. Check my... We good? Yeah, we are good. Just as I had imagined, these fish are shallow. At least there's a few fish shallow, but they might not. Gosh, holy cow. Okay, well, maybe uh, that's that's a different fish. So maybe that was not a bedding fish. That was just a little group of fish sitting on this point here. Cool, yeah. That one's half the size there. Well, at this rate, we're going to catch a quarter pounder on this cast. Let's see about it. I'm, I'm surprised fish that big, that small, I should say, can even get a frog inside their mouth. It's impressive. Makes you rethink like, oh, can smallmouth bass or spotted bass eat a, eat a jig or a frog? Yes. Yes, they can. If a bass of that size can get this thing in their mouth, they can do whatever they want. Okay, so I think we're going to catch quite a few on the frog. Even though water's super dirty, I really think uh, they're in a feeding mood and the plopper was just a little too fast for them. Now I've caught plenty of fish in dirty water on, on fast moving baits, buzz bait especially, patroller, but in terms of this day, you really gotta, you know, choose your lures based on what you're learning on, on a body of water on, on that. Gosh, on that day, holy cow, that's a big one. 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 And they want the frog. They want the frog. Come on now. Come on now. Holy cow. Holy cow. And get up. Yes, sir. Oh, baby. Six pounder. <laughs> oh, that's stinking awesome. Absolutely beautiful. Maybe I was over exaggerating. Maybe a five pounder, but oh gosh, so stinking healthy. Just look at how he got that pop and pad perch down the gullet. That right there is what you want to see. That's what dreams are made of. 
And uh, yeah, welcome to the uncut, folks. I hope today is going to be a lot more catching than fishing. And I have a, have a good feeling it is. Very, very bloody tail. You can see this fish was on a bed either right now or recently. Just look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Down the hatch. I'm going to do one cut here to uh, get a cool picture. And we'll be back. Well, in the effort of getting this fish back in the water. And I'm not going to weigh it, but I think it's five pounds or so. And there she goes. Swam off with some vigor. All right. Got a nice steep bank here or else I wouldn't have thrown her. Sick. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Let's go. Let's stink and go. You know, I got to cut again to collect myself. <sighs> All right, folks, we are back. Might as well give, a, <laughs> give another cast over there. My goodness. You love it when a plan works out. Now, of course, we are at a, like I mentioned, very, very private pond today. I don't know, though, if they've ever managed it. The guy that I'm with here today, Mike, said that there's not much management going on. So that just means they stocked the right genetics in here. And these fish are healthy, fat. Obviously, the, the bait fish population has survived throughout the years. And uh, I'm excited. Whenever, you know, y'all get the chance to fish places like this, or whenever I do, I never pass it up. Even if it means driving a few hours, just because, man, it, it is so much fun. Good way to gain confidence, to test some lures maybe you don't have confidence in. Now, I have no lack of confidence in the top water. Pop and perch. But still. Pretty dang awesome. Pretty dang awesome. Now, hey, you know what? Mock crush, bank flipped, probably close to a six pounder. That's what I'm talking about. Got 50 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid. Ain't no problems for this combo. <laughs> Gotta love it. Okay. Pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. Again, if y'all uh, if y'all got a few dollars to spare, man, pick up one of those raffle tickets down below for Muscular Dystrophy Foundation. I'm super passionate about it. And hey, if you want a chance to come pond fishing with me, we can pond fish, we can boat fish, we can catch largemouth, smallmouth. I, I spend about two months of the year up in the northern country every year, Minnesota, New York. If you want to go up there with me, we can plan that out and catch a smallmouth. So. There's a lot of cool things we could do if you win that trip. And if you don't win the trip, you're still entered into the boat. So how about that? If you want to have experiences like this, possibly catching a six pounder on a frog, gotta come hang out with me. And the only way to do that is if you win that trip. So, ooh, I just saw a wake right there. So there's probably a fish somewhere around this area right here. Being, being aware, especially pond fishing. Bass boat, I feel like there's a lot more noise going on. You hear the trolling motor, power poles going up and down. You know, you're just kind of more exposed to the, the noises. But if you're bank fishing, you really got to be aware of the sounds, what's going on around you. And if you are, you can really notice some things. So like if I end up catching one here, that's because I saw a little tiny wake that maybe if I was moving too fast or looking around, I wouldn't have noticed. Again, I'm hoping I do here so I can prove my point. But still, whether or not I catch one, you want to be observant when bank fishing. Yeah, I don't, don't know if I'm going to catch one. He's there. Just don't know if he wants to bite the old popping frog. Gosh, that cast, that was perfect. Inside pocket, close to the DAM. Look at this. Look at this, come on. Tell me something good, baby. Tell me something good. Oh my goodness. This is a beautiful cast. Just so calm and tranquil. We got a little bit of wind picking up, which is why I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop to this side over here to escape the wind while it picks up. I'm assuming, yeah, it's already kind of ripping down there. So I'll have to put on my microphone my on-body mic to get some better audio for y'all. Because I don't want y'all listening to the whole deal. <sighs> you know, wind blowing on my GoPro. It's probably already doing that. What a cast. Let's see, what else should I teach you guys that I'm noticing right now? Well, that, that bite came in less than two feet of water. 
I'm, I'm guessing with with this with the silt on the bottom it's probably a foot of water that was there and uh, the cast that I just made to that, that corner over there probably in about the same water depth one of the things that people I think don't think about when they're pond fishing is that the bank sometimes can slope off quick and sometimes slopes off pretty steady here and I think on this bank it slopes off kind of steady I'll find that out once I throw a Texas rig or a, uh, a sinking bait out there even a spinner bait or a vibrating jig can help you figure that out but the topwater bite yes I've gotten three of them right up against the side of this grass here but you could also potentially catch them a little farther out because you may have aquatic vegetation that's out there in four or five feet that the fish will still come up and hit topwater that you just can't see especially in this kind of water clarity another big one I think another big one another big one in that corner in that corner how big are you how big are you I don't think you're as big no but you're nice Gosh, holy cow, get in here. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Gosh, that is so stinking awesome. Another one eating the popping bad perch. Dang, that was like not a big explosion, not a huge bite. That's why I think the patroller was not the right call for the beginning here. These fish need, he's got a little bit of a wonky tail there. These fish need something a little bit slower, but they're still willing to hit. Just not at a, a mock speed, you could say. Full pun intended for mock baits. Sick. Alrighty, I'm gonna make one cast up to the fence, a little bit deeper, but again, probably still two feet of water out there. And it's interesting, I had, I had just made a cast there, didn't catch one. That was my second cast over that area. And I think it's because I landed farther away and brought it to it. The, the cast that I made previously landed on that area. So I, I probably scared that fish away on the first cast, but because the next one, it was brought to him, he was more used to it and ready to bite. So that's pretty cool. Man, this is fun. Y'all are gonna really get a lot of fish catching out of this video, I have a feeling. Alrighty. Probably my last cast, well, I'll make one more in this corner here. And then I've got to go hop the fence to get to the other side of the property. Yeah, and I think that fish was also on a bed. Could be wrong, but pretty sure it was. If you're curious about my frog setup, this is the pop pad perch in, ooh, couldn't tell you what color it is, but it'll be linked below. I'll link the braid and the combo as well. If y'all could shop for your tackle, Whenever you're going fishing, using those links in my video description, they're all affiliate links. So that would be super helpful to the help grow the channel. Um, you know, the, the more affiliate stuff I can get, the, the, the more videos I can make, the cooler places I can travel to, and the more I can teach you guys. So this is a business. I hate having to plug, you know, businessy things, but this is how I make my living. So if y'all are just going to order tackle on Tackle Warehouse anyways, just click through those links. Oh man, look at this. Beautiful blue bonnets. What a stinking morning. Welcome to Texas. If you didn't know, this is our state flower. Blue bonnet is gorgeous. Obviously these people here have, have seeded their property throughout the years. And that is, that is gorgeous. So stinking cool. Look at this. I mean, I wanna fish a pond one day that is just covered in these things. That'd be such a cool thumbnail. If the water was blue and the flowers were blue and it was not photoshopped, that'd be cool. All right, we got some we got some barbed wire on this fence here to deal with. So let me figure out where I'm going. All right, we've done made it. Man, hopping barbed wire is always a scary experience because it's so easy to like catch your shoe or your pants on it and then man you're you're torn up but we've made it we've made it to the dam i say that because i i don't want to get in trouble with youtube for saying a quasi bad word even though it's not a bad word in this connotation now i talked about the banks sloping uh the angle of the slope it should definitely be a little bit steeper of a slope here, so I'm for sure gonna make sure my casts are close to the bank. But also one thing that's good about these areas is that sometimes 
the, uh, the, the bottom is actually a harder composition because in order to build the pond, they've got to have something hard, gravel, rocks, sand to, to keep the water in. So I've caught many a spawning fish on the AMs before. And I think I'll catch some on this one. It looks like we have some fence posts that come from this fence here and run along that. So if I hook one across the fence, it's gonna be a, a wild fight. Now that cast there was a little too deep. I was kind of in line with the fence. I think I need to be in line with the grass edge. Oh, oh my goodness, hello. <laughs> See, right as I got along the grass edge, got myself a little bass. Cool. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. See ya, buddy. Somebody keep track in this video of how many fish I catch. I think that's five. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it's five largemouth bass. Oh, what a beautiful cast. What a beautiful cast. Oh, yes. Stinking gorgeous. Again, I'm, I'm doing top water here while we got the conditions. If you can see on the other side, it is already sunny over there. And not saying top water can't work then, but man, especially when it's uh, dirty water, you got super shallow water. I think these fish kind of want to want to hide. Although, you know what? Now that I say that, it's probably not right. Dirty water is probably more hideable uh, from the sun than clear water is. So I may I may keep the top water around especially if I keep catching them, but just kind of general tip. A lot of ponds, once that sun gets up, the top water bite is, is non-existent. Holy cow. Gosh, holy cow. What a strong fish, dang it. Oh. Well, can't win them all. Did y'all see how that fish dogged me? Holy moly. That was insane. Gotta blow the water out of this bad boy. Okay, so they're here. These fish are here, thousand percent. And I'm not even gonna focus on the fence line. I might come back and focus on that with a worm or a creature bait once the sun gets up. Gosh, dang it, man. Gosh, what is going on? How am I losing? I mean, like, frog is plenty sharp. He just, I probably didn't wait long enough. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of chill for a minute. I'll fish this little pocket over here because I think that was a male and a female that I just had hooked up. So I'm gonna give them a second to maybe collect themselves again. Cause I definitely stung both of them. Gosh, that's so much fun. This is awesome. Like this is the time of the year to fish a pond like this. Dirty water spawn, especially a pond like this that has, <laughs> that has obviously lots of fish. Now oh, bad cast, Tyler. Just gotta kinda reel it in slowly. Not scare nobody. Okay. Make a cast over there. Great. Check my GoPro. No water on the lens. Great. And I'm just gonna fish it really, really stinking slow. Man, I'm like, I'm setting the hook and these fish are taking me off to the side. Come on. I should probably wait like another half second before setting the hook. I think I've been a little too antsy. I've caught too many already that I'm, I'm just kind of feeling it, you know? But I gotta stick to the basics. Stick to what works, which is setting the hook a little bit slower. Okay. I'm gonna, on my way back, I'm definitely gonna make a cast towards that little area right here. But I think for now, keep it moving. Gosh, that is fun. These fish are very, very aggravated. They have something to prove. It seems like they either get it or they don't. Like they either like have it gagged way down there or they don't have it, but the, the skirts and maybe a little bit of the hook but the reason why I chose this color frog for this water clarity is because it's black. Again, the, the top color has almost no purpose 
the bass don't see you but the bottom and the skirts. So I picked a black frog though, black bottom because of the dirty water and low water uh, visibility right now. Even if it was sunny, and uh, sorry, not sunny, even if it was clear water, we still have a shade line right here. So the fish can't see as well. Can't differentiate colors, but black helps it stand out more, more contrasty. At least that's what we've always been taught. So it seems to make sense to me on cloudy days. I've always done better on a, on a black frog. Just my own personal experience with that. Oh, dang it. Not a good cast. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Because I could see you move a little closer. Close. Girl, I gotta get to get to know you. Everything about you. I'm not sure why that song is stuck in my head. I have not even listened to it today. But you've been looking over here all night. Looks like somebody been making some some moonshine up in here. Deposit in their jars from the police. Ooh, 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 I just saw a fish bust and I literally made a cast over where that fish was. Come on. That was like the luckiest thing ever. A fish bust as I made a cast. Come on now, eat it. Give some bigger pops. Let's see if you want bigger pops. No. He does not want bigger pops. Ooh, I said in my last uncut, I said that I was going to uh, to try to call my shots with top water. Like three, two, one, explode. Let's try that with this cast. First, I'm gonna get the water out, if there's any water in it. Nope, no water, we're good. Okay. Three, two, one, spoosh. And splash. Skadoosh. Boosh. Okay, now, we'll try it on some other, uh, some other high key casts. But obviously that guy didn't didn't want to play with my prediction game. I'm just kidding. Three, two, one, da! Ah, man. Now one thing I'm realizing is that I should have worn better shoes than my Ultra Boosts. Now they're junky shoes, like they're two or three years old. They've lost almost all their insoles, but they're not very tight. So I'm, you know what? I'm probably gonna tighten them here in a second after I catch a frogfish in three, two, one. Two. Ah, man. Cause my feet are kind of slipping as I walk along this bank. Man, there's a fish right in here. I moved the frog and I saw a wake go the other way. But I gotta tie my shoes, folks. It's, yeah, there you go. Okay, shoes are tied. Back to fishing. And we are losing our shadow line, folks. There's the sun coming up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he says. Let me get a little higher on this bank. Man, I tied this shoe way too tight. I'll deal with it. Ooh, not the best cast, but she'll do donkey. Actually, you know what? It could be a really good cast. Right up against the side way down there. Whew. Nah. Wasn't super pleased with that cast. It's kind of interesting. The The... The more centered I've got on the DAM, the less bites I've gotten. I bet you it's the deepest here 
and they're just gosh I was wrong I was wrong I was so wrong holy cow big and giant okay okay there we go not a giant I was wrong still a three pounder two and a half pounder it's just you, you just got to find the fish I guess it's probably not too deep here but if, if I was to guess in the spawn yeah most of them if they're going to be spawning on this area they're going to be in the corners but it doesn't mean you still can't catch a few and again like I was not working the frog very fast at all working it pretty slow it's at this point that I would ordinarily retie after this many fish on a frog I guarantee you a few of them have kind of frayed up the braid but mama didn't raise no wimp and I just forgot my scissors at the truck so just kind of one of my one of my strategies I make a big loop with the top water with a reaction bait I probably should bring my backpack with me just in case something goes bad, but Mama also didn't raise the smartest tool in the box. And that's me. I think once we get to the, the sunny side, if I don't get a bite on the sunny side for a number of casts, we'll we'll do a little speed ramp of me walking back to the truck, collecting my tackle bag, probably getting my Sony camera as well, and then really starting to dissect what's underneath the water. <laughs> but I'm 100% going to catch some uh, in this corner. In this corner and next to, uh, once I get my worm, my wormy out, squirmy wormy. Ooh, there's a, there's a wake right there. Once I get my worm out, there's a little water overflow, little pipe system that I'll probably catch one next to as well. Because the thing about these kind of ponds is that, you know, they, they don't have a whole lot of, of like hard structure. A lot of just shallow grass, probably a lot of mud. Man, if you can find like a rock, just like a singular rock, singular lay down piece of wood, there's, there's going to be a fish on that. 100%. Ooh, uh-oh. All right, here we go. One, eight. Three, two, one. Gosh, dang it. Gosh, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. He, he hit it out of the water, and it, it went kind of, whoo, and back down. I'm going to catch one now. And three, two, one, splash. Oh, dang it. And eat. You got to be kidding me. I didn't even hook you. Didn't even hook that fish. See, that's a scenario there that if I was in clear water, especially if it's sunny outside, I'm, I'm going back maybe once with the frog, but more than likely going back with a, a Texas rig or a wacky rig, probably an Ocho, because that fish is still there. I did not sting that fish. When I say sting, that means get a hook into its mouth, make it feel something, and then it gets off. So when you sting a fish, it's rare that fish will come back and eat again. They're probably, they'd feel like you and I would. If we go for a cheeseburger and we bite into it and it stabs us in the mouth, we probably are not going to go back for another bite. And I think that's how fish feel. When they eat something, it stings them, they're like, uh-oh, I'm going to take a break from snacking for a second. But I did not sting that fish, so that's confusing. Obviously, he's still here, just doesn't want to bite. Welcome to TRF Uncut, where I'm singing and spitting all the day long. And sniffling. Sniffly nose for some reason. If you enjoyed this video, hey, hit that subscribe button. I'll show you guys a graph here on the screen. This is how many people on my last Uncut that watched it were subscribed. Yeah, shocking. How many not subscribed people? So if that's you, you're watching right now, you haven't subscribed, hey, if you enjoy it, hit that subscribe button. My goal, you know, in these episodes is really to entertain, but teach as well. 
teach kind of in the moment. But a lot of my other, you know, videos, the 10, 15 minute videos are just, you know, jam packed to the best of my ability with instruction and teaching. I want to help make you guys better fishermen, better anglers, no matter where you live. That's why I travel across the country to catch fish. Yes, it costs money. The expenses are big, but I want to catch fish in Minnesota and Iowa and New York and Ohio. Florida, there's one. Gosh, holy cow. Holy cow. Gosh. Dude, these fish are like on another level. On another level. Holy smokes. Okay. And I want to catch some farm pond bass. Because <laughs> a lot of you guys out there do have access to really cool farm ponds and you want to know how to, how to dissect them. Because when you can do it well, when you can dissect your bodies of water well, that's why I, I teach from everywhere. Not just a bass boat guy, not just a bank guy. I try to do it all to really help you guys understand your bodies of water better. And I think we're putting on a frog fishing clinic today. So smash like. Smash the like and subscribe if, uh, if you're enjoying your content. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a cast by this dang thing, just to see. It actually, it could be shallower than I think, but nah, it's probably not. Probably kind of deep. Fish don't want to sink there on top water, they're on the bank right now. Fish are on the dang bank. Now one good thing I've noticed about this fence line here is there's no actual fence. It's just the posts, so. When I get a fish and he runs toward the post, I just got to worry about keeping him away from individual posts, not the actual, like, barbed wire. Because it doesn't exist, which is helpful. Because that fish, that last fish, dogged me right into that area that I would have lost him if that was uh, barbed wire. Yep, we are reaching the end of the shade here. This little corner has a little bit left. Not a whole lot. I think I'm also going to catch one in this corner. It just looks beautiful. And I'm... Gosh! Holy cow! Holy cow! I did a good job waiting there. I did a good job waiting there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Chill, 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 chill. Hey, stop it. Stop it, buddy. Gosh! Four pounder. Stinking four on the pop and perch. And I gotta get an Instagram story with these fish. This is unreal. There's my other Instagram story I took of the of the six pounder. Save that one. I got news for y'all. These farm pond bass are eating the pad perch today. I save a lot of my Instagram stories to my camera roll and post them when I'm off the water. That way I can get back to catching fish. But absolutely beautiful. That one kind of like torpedoed out of the water for it. Gosh. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Eat the camera. Bloody tail. Look at that right there. Fish was on a bed or was before. See ya, buddy. Sick. Sick nasty. Had a feeling I'd catch one here. And I don't think that's going to be the only fish I catch on this corner. I think I'll catch one right here as well. Check my camera. We're good. Let's go two casts in a row, baby. Let's go two casts in a row. This frog is going to be absolutely battle tested. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Now I also, you know, fully realize this is a private pond. This has probably a lot more fish in it per acre than most bodies of water. So I don't do all my videos on private ponds. I do a lot on public water. Majority are on public water. I just want to, again, mix it up. Public water, private water, big lake, small lake, river, stream, retention pond. Try to make videos for everybody. And I'm never going to pass up on the opportunity. Like my buddy Mike brought me here today to his property to catch some fish like this. Pretty dang cool. Oh man, they have a bunch of moonshiners around here. We got, we got cans and jars everywhere. And I was wrong, I guess, about multiple fish in this corner.
Okay, now we're making casts onto a sunny bank. Let's see. Now, if they're on beds, that those fish aren't moving off at all. And matter of fact, sun would make them even more committed to an area. So I'm, I'm probably not gonna catch any just cruising fish on this side. Oh, gotta put my sunglasses on. Sunglasses in, in this instance are not to see in the water. They're just to protect my eyes. Well, I lied about there being no cuts. I did fish down that entire bank right there. Didn't get a single bite, it's not even a bite on the topwater frog. So that tells me that well, one of a few things is happening. That the sunlight and the harsh angle of that sunlight early in the morning moved those fish off. Uh, B, the fish are not even on that bank to begin with. Or C, they are there. It's just for whatever reason, the fish on that bank don't want to eat the frog when the fish on these banks did. So I kind of doubt that C is the case have more of a feeling that it is A, that the harsh sun angle moved them off. So I'm gonna come back, especially with how windy that bank was. I mean, I even fished a lay down, try, uh, an overhanging tree. I skipped my frog in there from, from both angles. That didn't even have a fish, which is surprising. Like I would think with the, the, the more water depth that's right there, there would for sure be a fish under that tree and there wasn't. So I think it's a case of sunlight moving those fish off Bass don't have eyelids, so they gotta hide somewhere. And maybe they, you know, just like we are, our eyes get used to the night and the nighttime. And if you were to just flash the lights on and say, hey, go uh, go play some pickleball, nah, you couldn't do it. So if I try to expect these fish that just got blasted by the sunlight to eat a frog, they might not be able to. So I'll give that bank a little bit of time as I work my way back to the truck here trying to catch a, a few more on the frog. I'm gonna go faster than I went the first time. I'm gonna be honest though, I don't quite remember where the bites were that I lost. I know one was down there in the corner, but I don't remember where the, the fish that exploded twice and missed it. I don't remember where he was. So we're just gonna kinda go faster. But hey, it's possible that the sunlight reaching this bank Gosh, I was gonna say we'll make the frog bite non-existent, but no, there's one. <laughs> there's one. Okay, beautiful. See that 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 kind of fish right there, two pounder, such beautiful proportions, fat. You catch one that's a little longer, and that you got the, the six pounder that I caught earlier. That's the kind of proportions you want. All right, so either either my uh, analysis is wrong and the sun is not moving those fish, or this fish just wasn't affected. And I have a feeling that's more the case. But sometimes, that's why, that's why I do these uncuts in these ponds so you guys can fully see a fishing day. Sometimes there are just better places to catch fish on certain bodies of water. Certain stretches are gonna be better. Certain stretches have, have deeper water. Certain stretches have better grass. Some of them may have where the, the bluegills are, are spawning. That's where the bass are gonna be during that time. So just because a pond looks very similar from the sky, from the drone shot, does not mean the whole thing is the same. Because oftentimes what you, what you can't see underwater is quite a lot of differences. Sploosh, 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 sploosh. All right, I think that was, I'm pretty sure that fish right there was where I had the bite. I think so, at least. Now, there's also a reason why I work ponds clockwise, because I'm right-handed, so I'd rather cast this way and set the hook this way. I don't like to work places counterclockwise. Just not my best casting angle, not my best hook set angle for sure. Because if I want to work the edge of this grass with whatever lure I'm throwing, right now it's a frog, but if it's a if it's a vibrating jig or a Texas rig, I want to have it on my dominant side. And you could say, well, just throw a left hand reel. Well, what are you going to do about working working clockwise with a left hand reel? Then you're going to be backwards as well. So I just always try to work ponds clockwise if I can. and it is starting to get hot really grateful though for my 
AFCO clothing. Y'all know that, I've, I mean, if you follow the channel, you know that I've worked with AFCO now for, I think, going on six years. They're an incredible brand, a family-owned brand. They make some of the best fishing clothing out there. And if you're sick and tired of getting your, you know, your your, your arms sunburned because you wear short sleeve shirts on the water, you need to get yourself some sun shirts. SPF 50, I believe, on these shirts. They've got a whole bunch of different kinds. This here is a kind of a little bit of a warmer one. I think it's the, uh, it's the something recycled one. I'll leave it linked below. But it still has a buff and a sun shirt, a sun hoodie. They have the Yuri. They have the Samurai. I mean, tons of different price points. And man, they support me in the channel. And so if y'all want to get yourself some AFCO, they make the best rain gear out there, some cold gear. If you need a rain jacket, check them out. My code is TRF2023. And that should get you 15% off your order. So my merch brand that I dropped as well, Infinite Outdoors, I do some collaborations with AFCO. And so my winter collaborations is always the Reaper sweatshirt. And then my summer collaboration coming up is the uh, Samurai and the Yuri. So if you want to wait around to get some AFCO that's branded with Infinite Outdoors, just wait. We got some cool stuff coming. But I'll, I'll, leave, uh, I'll leave my merch link down below as well for y'all to check out. If you haven't seen the merch, it's got a cool, cool double meaning to it infinite possibilities for catching fish and making memories and then a god that i a god that i believe is infinite in his love he'd send his son jesus to die for us so that's what infinite outdoors is i'm super proud of it and like i said we got some awesome afco stuff coming because if you're not wearing afco on the water you're getting sunburned what are you doing what you doing janet what you doing tina Okay, yeah, these fish are definitely not chewing the frog anymore. All right, right there is a cast that could result in a fish because I lost two in that area earlier. So let's see. Not as much wind on this bank here. Actually, no wind at all, so I'm not gonna do big pops with the frog just smaller ones, more finesse -y. And if they were on a bed, man, they, they would eat this again. It makes me think that a lot of these fish are just post-spawn, maybe fry garters. Honestly, maybe why they're so aggressive. Maybe why they're so aggressive. Ah. See, backhand roll cast is not my jam. Oh, and then I got all tangled up. Come on. Thank you. A little bit deeper of a cast. Okay, well, those fish don't want to come back. And that's okay. They don't have to. I already caught all their friends anyways. All right, last cast here with the frog in this little pocket. And then we're gonna head back to the truck, get re-rigged, put the top water away. We're definitely gonna grab a, a few rods. Spinner bait, vibrating jig, swim jig. Well, maybe, maybe creature bait, I don't know. I might bring all four. I normally don't bank fish with uh, four rods, but I might until I see what they're biting. Come on, get off of there, please. Thank you. Beautiful. All right, folks, that's it for the frog. What an absolute fun morning. And now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get across this uh, barbed wire fence from this angle, which is harder. Oh, did it. All right, mid-morning update. We're back at the truck here, gonna kind of regroup and get ready for some subsurface fishing. So I'm not saying that you couldn't catch one on a top water, but I think that season, that time of the day is kind of over. So I'm gonna pick three lures to take with me as we kind of do the same loop again, maybe start farther down where I fished the patroller and didn't get any fish on it. Cause I bet you there were fish there. I just was going too fast uh, to catch them. So I have 
Outcast Tackle swim jig. This here is the, I believe it's the pro swim jig in Alabama Shad. As you can tell, beautiful chartreuse and white. Then in the same color you know, scheme, I've got the, the tungsten thunder cricket with a gold blade here. Again, we got a little bit of chartreuse and white with the new scound bug as the trailer. I have a white scound bug on both the swim jig and the vibrating jig. And then on the last Mach 2 combo, we have a Texas rig to go a little slower. It is the Space Monkey, my favorite creature bait, really for all year long, but especially the springtime dragon hopping around. It is a perfect mixture of a flat lizard type, but also appendages like a, uh, like a big rage cross, something like that. So I have all three of those. I don't know which of the two moving baits is gonna be best. That's why I'm bringing all three with me. But let's begin part two of uncut. So we have reached our kind of initial starting spot that we that we began with the frog, but this time we've got our three different rods. I think I'm gonna start and probably stick with, it's pretty windy as you can tell, stick with the thunder cricket. Just because the water's so dirty, it's getting pretty windy. I'm not sure if the fish can hear or sense the swim jig. We'll still make a few casts just to be sure, but I think the vibrating jig and if we go back by the truck here in a second, I'll probably replace the swim jig that I brought with a spinnerbait. I just, I wanna catch it on a swim jig. I'm just not sure if the conditions today, specifically the water color, make that uh, a good choice. So I'm gonna kinda cast around, see if I can't feel, if, if there's any aquatic vegetation, any grass out there that I couldn't sense with the frog, couldn't see before the sun was up. And it's gassing, as you can tell. <laughs> it's getting light, it's getting windy. So I apologize for any wind noise, but hey, wind is your friend, they say. I don't know who they are, but that's what they say. In bass fishing, wind is your friend. Stirs up the ecosystem, gets things going. That's the hope, at least. If it wasn't so snot grassy, a lipless crankbait or a hybrid hunter could probably work really well. But man, just, I mean, in terms of a a pond bait all year round. If you don't have a Thunder Cricket tied on, you're, you're doing something wrong. I need to make sure that my audio is going. My microphone going? Yes, it is, okay. Because y'all could not hear me if we were using my GoPro audio, and we're probably still gonna have some audio issues. <clears throat> gonna take some more audio work for sure. Man, you can't tell me there's not a few fish willing to eat all thunder chicken. It's at this point in the video that I don't have a whole lot to say really. I'm kind of fishing slower, dissecting a little area apart, then moving my stuff another 30 yards, then dissecting that area. I think part of the reason why I'm, I'm doing it this way as well, oh gosh, there's one, there's one. Yes sir, yes sir, biggin, 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 biggin. Okay, okay, perfect. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh gosh, she just got water all over the lens. Let's clean that off here for a second before we show them to the camera. Oh, come on, what the heck? There we go. Beautiful fish right there. Again, though, super blown out, I apologize. That's the part of being a YouTuber that's more difficult. Look at that fish right there. Gorgeous, gorgeous three pounder probably. Absolutely choked. Thunder thunder chicken and that was like right next to the bank again right next to where i'm at so i'm gonna definitely take my time may have to do more speed ramps in between fish catches uh to make this video not too long but that's kind of what you gotta what you gotta do is if you're fishing a brand new body of water cover water to find fish like i know there's fish on this bank and on the the dam and so i'm going to uh i'm gonna kind of spend more time making some fan casts in these areas you know, if I didn't have this big camera, if I was just rolling chest mount, I might still go pretty fast with just a vibrating jig. But I think in terms of getting good content for you guys, going a little bit slower, making some more fan casts around the area is probably better in terms of this video. So that's the plan. Hey, comment challenge. It is comment challenge time. That is when in the video, I give you guys something to comment. And so today's comment challenge is going to be where is your dream fishing location? If you wanna go abroad, do you wanna go fishing in Spain? Do you wanna to go to Brazil for peacock bass? Do you wanna to go to 
uh, Antarctica to catch Arctic char or trout. I don't, I don't know what your, your fishing dream is, but whatever your dream location is, leave it down below. In the comment section, I'd love to hear where y'all want to fish. It's pretty, it's pretty, I'm pretty blessed that I've been able to fish a lot of my dream places, but there's still quite a few ones abroad that I want to go to. I want to go to Brazil, catch peacock bass. I want to, I want to catch, uh, gosh, what's the fish called? Um, a GT. I want to catch a GT in Australia or Africa. There's some fish I want to catch, but I want to hear where y'all's dream fishing location is. So leave it down in the, in the comment section, baby. That's your comment challenge for today. And that fish ate like right here. Fish ate at the bank. Kind of clues me in a little bit though. Like if I if I catch one more fish near the bank and I make fan casts out there to the middle, it's not worth my time on the rest of the spots that I stop at to fish out in the middle. So I'm still gonna make quite a few, but just to try to pattern, I'm probably not going to uh, fish unproductive areas once I discover what the productive locations are in terms of depth range from the bank. I think that's one thing a lot of people mess up on, especially pond fishing, is you catch a few and you don't think about how you caught them. You don't think, man, that bite came right next to the grass or it came on the drop off or next to some sticks. You just think, oh great, I caught one. Well, there's probably a pattern there and if you can put it together relatively quickly, you'll be efficient throughout the rest of the day. And again, I put together the pattern of the frog really quickly. And now I'm trying to put together a pattern of the vibrating jig. So I've made quite a few casts in this area. Let's pick up our stuff and move down the bank a little bit. And this is an uncut. So you're getting me, uh, you're getting me walking. Hello, how y'all doing? Getting me walking down the bank. Good angle, perfect. All right, again, beginning the fan. Beginning the fan cast toward the left, going to the center, and then going back to the right. Let's restart this clip. Uh-oh, I just realized I was not recording my chest mount for that entire thing. So I guess y'all didn't see any of the uh, ch chest angle. Apologize for that. Gosh, it's gotten windy. Wind is picking up. Is that one of your family members? Okay. All right, I know I promised no more cuts, but there was another cut. The property owners on that corner over there came and got their John boat, and they're gonna try to fish from uh, the John boat with no paddles or trolling motor in this wind. So good luck to them. But we exchanged the swim jig for a fire tiger colored spinnerbait. Honestly matches the mock crush rod pretty well. And the rest that's uncut, I'm really gonna focus on this section here and the bank that I didn't catch any on on the frog, because I just, I'm telling you guys, there's gotta be fish there. And I'm excited. I feel like the best is yet to come in terms of uh, finding an area and catching, you know, a few back to back to back. I think we're going to catch some big fish here. So stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. The uncut begins again right now. There's just always distractions and people calling me. So I always say uncut. It's not totally uncut all the time. And man, it is blowing. That wind is going right now. Check my drag. Ooh, a little too much drag. Well, yeah, a little too much. All right, come on, fish. Eat the old spinner jig. Oh, that was a bite. Gosh, there he is. There he is on the spinner bait. Either a different fish or that guy came back for it. Let's go. Let's go. The corner's got some fish. Uh-oh, almost got hooked. Beautiful. Not a giant, but we'll take him. We will take him to the bank and deposit him. That's what I say. Oh no. Dang it, we're not. My, my chest mount wasn't going again. Shoot. I am a bad YouTuber. Bad boy. Record your cameras, you doof. We're going now. Not that we really needed the chest cam angle of a two pounder. 
but we're going now. It's one of the hard things about this job is that I've got to keep cameras rolling and, and worry about that. I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be able to be fishing on, you know, a Friday, I guess like a lot of guys fish on a Friday, but most of the time I'd be, you know, working a desk job if I didn't have this job. So I'm never going to complain, but it is a challenge sometimes to get everything on camera. It's not always easy. Get, it, get the lighting good, get the audio good, sync it all up. But you know what? If I didn't focus on all that, I couldn't be fishing for a living, so I'm grateful. Grateful to you guys watching. If y'all didn't watch these videos, I wouldn't have a job. So please watch, share them around with all your buddies. If they like bass fishing, maybe they'll like me too. I don't know. I hope so. Come on, I feel like I feel like Bill Dance over here, just throwing a spinnerbait in a dirty water pond. That's all that brother did for years and years. Probably, probably still all he does. Which ordinarily should turn these fish on, but I think with the fact that it's springtime, it's spawn. It's not like, the, a lot of the fish are not focused on feeding. So the wind won't have as, as much of an effect on them. Probably has a negative effect if, if they're on beds. Makes them less, less uh, likely to stay on the bed and might move them off. All right, we're gonna be done with this corner. Actually, nah, not done yet. I gotta throw, uh, I gotta throw the thunder cricket a little bit down this bank here. I like this rod. This is one of the, Mach 2 technique specific, it's called the crankback, and it's a seven foot medium heavy moderate. So it's got quite a lot more bend, a lot more taper to the rod, if that's the right term. I don't know, I forget. And it's designed for crankbaits and lipless, vibrating jigs, that kind of thing. Probably be a staple in my boat my, not my boat, my kayak and on the bank. Oh, and that was, now that I think about it, in terms of patterning, I know I talked about that. That's two fish that uh, now that I'm working the bank are again on the bank. Now, sorry, now that I'm throwing reaction baits are still on the bank. So I should probably not spend as much time casting out deep. I'll still cast out deep a little bit there, but I mean, as far as that next bank, I mean, I'm just gonna absolutely crank down that one fast with these two uh, reaction baits because I think that's where the fish are. All right, two more casts here and then we're gonna hop the barbed wire fence and get around to that side. Knocking my vibrating jig. Yeah, he don't want this bait. It was really shallow anyways, it's like a foot deep. It's even, even shallower than I I thought it would be. And maybe I'm lying this whole time and it's just a stick on the bottom, but it feels... Oh, okay, <laughs> I was wrong. It's a stick, it's a stick. When I went really slow, I felt my, my lure climb over it. It's a stick. I give him the Grinch when he's Throws the, throws the fake stick and Max runs and he says, there's no stick. I'm smarter. All right, last cast here. Yeah, got a bunch of gunk. Got a bunch of gunky gunk. Let's get ourselves collected and head up to the barbed wire fence. Again, I have permission to fish on the other side. I'm not trespassing on private private land over here or anything. Oh, it looks like across the pond, uh, the other property owners do have a trolling motor. So they'll have a little more success probably fishing, fishing from the John boat than I thought they would. Oh, this is so gorgeous. What a day. What a time to be alive. What a time to catch bass. Am I right? Smash like, smash like as an amen. That's y'all's virtual amen. 
smashing like. Okay, let's see how I'm gonna get this camera gear here. Cause I do not want to lose my camera to the pond. Alrighty, put the tackle bag down and let's go with the old, you know what? I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with the spinnerbait. Again, I think this is the, like the Bitsy, the Bitsy spinnerbait, I'm not exactly sure which, which one it is, but it is a, uh, it's a Strike King. I will leave it linked down below. I'm gonna start with this, cause this is the most shallow water moving bait I've got. Gosh, I just have one right here. Just have one right here. You know, I just keep, if I get a bite, I wanna throw a creature bait back there and get him to bite, you know? That's what I wanna do. I feel like I should be able to. He fish knocked it twice right here. I just, I can't imagine the fish, you know, kamikazes it and then peels out of here. I just feel like they've got to stick around. Oh, I'm also going to put my buff up and my hoodie. I would like to not get sunburned. And man, it's just so... Like this is my, my least favorite type of lighting is this. Bluebird skies, wind. It's just so harsh. Everything's so blue and white. Mm, I wanna jack one in the jaw right now. I'm feeling it. I'm getting I'm getting jittery. Want to jack one in the jaw with my Texas rig. Come on now, come on now. Let me jack you, let me jack you in the jaw. Gonna turn around here, cast in this area. Got some, got some bites in earlier. And definitely gonna throw at every single one of these wooden fence posts that's down here in the water. Throw at it with the, the creature bait little slower presentation. Gosh. Yeah. I was jacking him. I almost jacked him in the jaw. He just got off. Didn't have it very well. But he thumped it and was swimming. So that makes me excited. Makes me really excited. I like that. Am I too close to the camera here? Maybe. I'll kind of back up this way. <laughs> All right. Come on, fish. Come back for it. Got him. Gosh! Yes! Jacked him right in the face. Right in the face hole. Get in here, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jacked him. In the face hole. Oh, well, you got the camera all kinds of wet, buddy. Thank you, though. Thanks for letting me have some fun. Jacking you, Mr. Two and a Half Pounder. Thank you, buddy. Yes! Let's clean off my lens. Y'all probably can't even see much of it, but it's a lot of water. Oh man, I'm excited. That gets me pumped. Catch them on a Texas rig. Sheesh, brother. Sheesh, brother. Let's go. What line is this, 17? Yeah, 17 pound Seaguar in Vizex. Stuff, this stuff's the truth, man. This line is, is really stinking good. Amazing castability, good knot strength, doesn't get uh, memory too quickly. I'm a big fan of 17 pound Invisex. Mm. I'm also a big fan of bass, big bass, and jacking their jaws. Let's restart these clips. Big fan of jaw jacking. That's what I like. Uh oh, someone's calling me. Alton Jr. Why are you crying? 
I don't know. He just, like, the second I started dying, he started crying. So, he doesn't like you. Oh. <laughs> I like him, though. Yeah. Where you at? Uh, Private Pond. Nice. Been free, freaking jacking them. <laughs> okay. That was my buddy Alton Jr. I talked about him earlier. I filmed for him on tour. Him and his wife just had their first baby, baby boy. So super excited for him. He, that was my first FaceTime with his, his new son. So pretty cool to see. It's funny. He said he said he was uh, his son was doing perfectly fine, not crying. And then as soon as the FaceTime turns on, Wah! but it's it's really fun, you know, having friends about the same age as you who are going through similar stages of life. He's he's a few years ahead of me. Um, you know, hopefully we'll join him with, with kids soon. But he's uh, just a, a really good friend to me. In, in life, you don't really have a whole lot of, of best friends, you know? There's a lot of acquaintances, a lot of people that you, you come into contact with and meet, um, but not a whole lot that you know, stick around for a long time. But Alton's been one of those friends, you know, to me for a long time, and I'm, I'm super grateful. So not to get all sappy over here, but if you, if you get the chance, man, really develop a friendship with somebody that'll last through the thick and the thin. That's my, uh, that's my second challenge. First was a comment challenge, and now we have a, a life challenge. And now I have a lure challenge. Got it. I was stuck. Now one thing I don't like that's going on is our, our neighbors over here with the John boat. I think the, the trolling motor doesn't work. It did, and then it broke. And now they're just like moving the John boat all along the bank. And I was, I was hoping to fish that bank. <laughs> so I'm hoping they're not just totally screwing up the bank. But they might, you know what? I don't own the water, bro. Can't tell them what they can and can't do. All right, but what I can do is I can put this Texas rig down, pick back up my spinner bait, and go to work. Check my line, 15 pound basics on here. Really, a lot of the Seaguar fluorocarbons feel pretty similar to me, but the basics is a good line. It's not as good. There's one. Gosh, gosh, there we go. Not as good of a line in terms of abrasion resistance and and uh, longevity, but for 10 bucks, it is a dang good spool line. Heck yeah, look at that. First cast back, spinner bait, beautiful, one pounder. And that's the kind of like chunky belly. Oh, he's got a hard belly. Dang, I wonder what's in there. Got something hard in there. Probably a bait fish, probably an old bait fish. And I can tell I didn't tighten down this uh, rod enough because the reel was kind of flipping there. Sick. Man, I think I'm going to catch a lot of fish on this bank. That's the, that's the vision I get here. I'm feeling it. There's probably a lot more fish than, than ate my frog. I hope so, at least. Hope. Got to readjust my trailer hook. When I throw a spinnerbait in open water, almost always try to throw a trailer hook. I just I, I don't see a downside at all. If fish are gonna slap at it, I want to have the best chance at hooking them, and that's with the trailer hook. Is my spinner bait? Is my, are my blades going? Man, I kind of want some blades that are gonna kick a little more. Like this spinner bait's great. It's just kind of small, and the blades, especially when they're inhibited by snot grass, the blades don't really kick a whole lot. All right, last cast here, and then I'm going to uh, keep on going down the bank. Yeah, the, those guys, the trolling motor definitely doesn't work on their, on their John boat. So they're trying to figure out how to get back, I think. That's a tough fishing day. I've had those days. Oh, also the sun went away. We've all had those days where we have all these grand visions for how we're going to catch them, and, you know, how good of a day it's going to be, and then it ends up not being good because... Your technology breaks or your engine won't start. Oh, that was, that was, that was uncomfortable. This summer in Minnesota, there was a, a lake that I, oh gosh, we'll go chest mount here, a lake that I stopped at. And it looked like a first date type deal at the ramp. A guy was bringing his new girlfriend out on his boat and it was an older boat. And then the engine wouldn't start. And I tried to help him figure it out, but his, his engine just was, was dead. 
And I felt bad because he probably told her how excited he was to go on the lake. That's rough. So comment below if you've ever had an experience like that. Because I've had those, you know, just with like, you know, a fishing boat, not like a girl. Not trying to, not, not trying to impress somebody and, and take them on a date. That'd be a bummer. Okay. We're about 20 yards down. 20 yards down. Going to fish the old spinner bait. And we definitely have more clouds moving in. Like quite a lot more clouds. So moving bait could definitely work. It already is, but it could work a lot more as these fish cruise around. And as you can tell, I'm, I'm going clockwise again because I like the casting angle, I like the hook set angle. I like all the angles. I'm an angular kind of guy. Gosh, I just got thumped. I just got thumped, which means it is officially creature bait time. Mm, not the best cast, I don't think. Not the best cast. We good here? I don't quite like the angle. I'm not obsessed with it, but probably fine. All right, those guys are totally messing up that whole bank over there. They're just, just using the wooden piece of two by four in the grass and the, on the bank. Dang it. Probably not going to catch any over there for a while. Ooh, hello. Hello. Oh, one had it. And he dropped it. I felt the thump and then swimming and then nothing. Let's try it again. Just slowly hopping, dragging. That's the deal with this creature bait. The deal is a slow drag, slow hop. As it lifts up or drags, let those claws, appendages do their rage deal and let it sink back down to the bottom. I throw it on like a 16th ounce weight, eighth ounce at the heaviest. Really just want to be slow with it. Well, I'm surprised that I didn't get a bite there. Or I didn't, didn't hook up because there was definitely at least one fish. One fish on this little bank here. Maybe I should have gone back right after with the spinnerbait if, if I knew exactly where that fish was. What are these guys doing? They like pushed the John boat out to try to start it and now they're walking down the bank with it again. I have no idea what they're doing. I'm not gonna lie, filming an uncut dragging a creature bait feels a lot slower than, than fishing a frog. It feels like time is going by way slower. But time's the same. Time ain't changed. What are these guys doing? So confused. Because I think some of these are on beds, but, but some are not. So like, you think that the bite I got, I would have been able to flip back in there and get him again, but obviously that fish was not on a bed or doesn't want to bite again. So it's just worth my time to keep moving and not keep making the same cast. And if that spinnerbait keeps working, I'm just not even gonna throw the thunder cricket. Whew. Great angle y'all are seeing here. Great angle of my torso. Gosh, <laughs> little guy. <laughs> little guy ate it right at the bank. Right at the, chill, 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 chill. I, I haven't done this in a while. Single scoop ice cream cone bass. Single scoop bass. He ate it. It's amazing how even small ones in just a split second can get their entire mouths around this thing. Pretty crazy. Check my chest mount. Looking good. Feel bad for those guys over there. They were hoping for a good fishing day. And instead they gotta deal with boat troubles. We've been there, buddy. We've been there. Where are the grandes at, huh? Where'd them grande bass go? 
There were, there were big ones on this bank. Ain't no way they all ate the frog. Gotta catch one on the spinnerbait. I've got to. All right, no more fish on the spinnerbait. Oh, you know what? I'll pull up the, uh, I'll pull up the old vibrating jig. Give that a shot. See what we're dealing with here. Two. I mean, man, it's not even deep out the, it's not even deep in the dam. Come on. It's like five feet deep out there. Maybe. Just a shallow pond. Shallow pond, shallow bass. Some of the most fun ponds, honestly, are the, the shallow ones. Because you know that you can go power fish all you want. You can throw a lipless, you can throw a vibrating jig, oop, and a fish just chased right here. I can just imagine in the winter, a light Alabama rig out here, whew, go to town. We'll go straight to town. No stops, straight to the bank. Yep, there's for sure no fence that I can tell in between these posts, which is nice. All right, last cast here, and then we'll move down. I'm not sure how many casts I do in an area. Like I, when I say an area, I mean like that I can cast around from where I, where I stationary stand. Um, that, that didn't make sense. From where I'm standing, where I can cast, that's an area. So I probably make, you know, 10 or so casts with a lure from stationary area and then maybe switch lures and then move. But I'm not making like 20 minutes worth of casts before I move. That can work, especially in the in the, the post-spawn, as in pre-spawn, as fish are filing in and out of areas in the winter as well. But you know, I think for the most part, I like to be a covering water type of fisherman. And so, because of that, we're going to put this lure away. Keep covering water, baby. Grab our rods, grab our tackle bag, and our camera. Keep on moving. Keep this train rolling. Rolling on the river of love. I just want a bass to toilet flush my spinnerbait. Like I'm pulling the spinnerbait up to, to make another cast and it's just stoosh. That's what I would like. Is that too much to ask? I got an idea thought about it. If I catch a fish over five pounds, I already got one of them today, but if I catch one more fish over five, I will give away the lure that I caught that fish on. So stick around. If you want to learn how to win that, again, if that happens, I'm not going to guarantee it happening, but if I catch a five pounder, I will give away that lure to one of you guys watching. That should incentivize folks to watch the rest of the video. And man, I just, I, I, I like cloud cover, but it just means that my lighting changes all the time. Oh gosh, I just did a backhand roll cast right into the, right into the water. That's not what I wanted. I am one of you. I get backlashes too. Not very often, but sometimes. Sometimes I get backlashes. Come on. Get off of there. Get off of there, line. Ugh. Dang it. There we go. Okay. Put this away. Grab the vibrating jig. Make two or three casts with this and then a cast or two with the Texas rig. But this, I remember this section of the dam here, I did not get many, uh, many bites. So 
I don't think many bass live in this little section here. And that's one thing that I've learned, that at least on this day, they're not in this section. So if I, come, if I was to come back to the same pond in my neighborhood, or if I was to come back to this pond, and I learned where the fish were going to be, I'm not going to waste my time fishing this little area. Now, I'm not saying that can't change. That can change for sure over time. But I've patterned this body of water for these conditions during this time of the year. And right now, they're not right here. So this will be my last cast right here. Yeah. Pull it on in. Let's move on down. We are the next contestant on The Price is Right. Tackle bag down, spinner bait up. <laughs> Push this camera down a little bit. Great. Man, I like it in this corner. Ain't no wind in this corner. Feels nice. Makes me a little more calm. Oh, there's the wind again. Smoke too soon. Boca too soon. Don't dare stop, fish. Where are you? Where are you? I mean, we had a lull during this time on the, the dam as well, so kind of expected. I think we're gonna catch one on that water overflow there. Matter of fact, if I don't get one on this cast, I'm gonna kind of quickly go down with the spinner bait. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna zoom in this lens here. So as I go down the bank, y'all can see me. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Y'all can see me as I fish quickly down this bank with the spinnerbait. And I really just want to miss one on the spinnerbait. So I know where to cast my creature bait. So I can jack their jaw. Man, the, see, the frog section really seemed like I was just filming a regular video because the, the, the action was like so constant. But this one, this section, just kind of feels like it's dragging. I need to catch more fish. I set an unrealistic expectation this morning with how many fish I caught. Oh gosh, dang it. I drug my spinnerbait again as I cast it, and that's not what you want. I'm getting too sloppy. Too many forced fumbles. And always clear off your spinnerbait, especially these little sections right here, because they're not gonna run right. The blades are not gonna kick right if you don't have it clear. See, honestly, this is kind of why I stick with one rod and I cover water. Because if I had kept trying multiple different rods and setting up the camera and breaking it down and going to the next spot, I would have spent 25 minutes on this little stretch here. And instead, I know, you know what, unless I missed one, and that would, that would bite a different lure, which is unlikely because of how aggressive they are today, um, I would have wasted a whole bunch of time there. So now that I made it up to this point, I can finish this cast, go back and get my cameras, and come back and start fishing this little piece of structure in the water. You gotta use strategery, folks. As my good friend, Mr. George W. Bush. Strategery. We're not gonna beat the Iranians if we ain't got no strategery. And we're not gonna catch no bass if you ain't using strategery. Get my bag. And I'm all kinds of green mocked out, mock nation. Oh yeah, one other cool thing. 
that I'll tell you all about. Oh, I'll, I'll hold up. I'll wait until I get down there to tell you guys. Actually, you know what? Ah, I'll tell you right now. Hello. We're doing online tournaments. So I'll flash up a graphic on the screen right now. We're doing online mock tournaments in I think May, June, July called the Summer, the Summer Smash Series. And you can compete against me. They are free to enter on, on Fishing Chaos. They're all length based. We have a five fish limit one. We have a uh, every fish counts one. And y'all can literally sign up, compete against me and all the other mock YouTubers, Mr. Mr. Noah Pescatelli, Mr. Adob, Fletcher, some other guys. You can compete against us and win a whole bunch of prizes. Like there's it, the likelihood of you winning combos and gift cards just from like ran, random raffles during the tournaments is, is very high. So if you are into fishing tournaments, you wanna do some online ones, I will leave that link down in the video description. Again, totally free. Not a thing you gotta pay for. Free to enter and uh, free to win. Now I guess nothing's free to win because of your time. And I guess, you know what? I guess it's not free to enter either because your time is worth something. But online tournaments, go check them out in Mock Nation. Fish and Chaos as well is like the best platform for, for online tournaments. Gosh, I like, I, I'm hesitant to adjust the lighting because it's gonna get, you know, dark in a second from a cloud and it won't have been worth it. Okay. Fish in a Texas rig along this little piece of concrete block. There's gotta be one around it. It's the only piece of structure in here. Oh, there it goes again. Getting dark. <laughs> Let my bait sink. I think it's deeper out there actually. I think this might be the deepest corner right here. Which makes sense. That's where they're that's where they're drawing water from whenever they used to do that. So makes sense this is the deepest pocket. Just slow drag, slow hop. Can't overstate how slowly I dragged this thing in the spring. Wind makes it a little hard to feel. And I, you know, I could have filmed a 100 Ponds episode here, but I felt like it would just be more fun to take you guys along with me for just an, an awesome day of fishing. And you know, there's a risk, there's a risk to that. If I, if I don't film 100 ponds and I film an uncut and it's a bad day of fishing, I basically wasted it because, you know, I could make an uncut with like two catches, but that'd be, that'd be boring. There wouldn't be a whole lot to talk about, a whole lot to teach. And so uncuts are kind of risky. If, if the fishing day is bad, it's hard for me to turn that into just a regular video. You know, if, otherwise if I did 100 ponds, that can just be one of the ponds in the, in the video. One of the two or three. But I'm glad it. Uh, I'm glad it's worked out. Thanks for watching. We got a little more fishing to go. Depending on how this corner goes, I might just leave the big camera down here and just bring the spinner bait and the Texas rig with me as we go all the way down that bank. We'll see. Come on now. Tell me something good, baby. Tell me what I want to hear. I want to hear about big bass, big stage, big dreams. Bassmaster. They're not on that thing. I was fully expecting to get a bite off that, but I did not. But then again, I've been patterning and they're on, they're shallow. So what am I doing? Trying to do something else. I know the depth zone they're in and I gotta stick to it. Gotta stick to my guns, to my finger guns. Okay, now it's finally flat again. Can bring my tripod out a little bit. 
really surprised that like the vertical structure, all these poles didn't get a single bite on any of them. It's very odd. You think these fish would be clinging to anything they have in the water, but today they're not. Come on, man. Eat it. Okay, well. Man, they're just not, they're not as active as they were this morning. That's a bummer, dude. Put my bag here, grab the spinnerbait. Let's go ahead and make a few fan casts around this area here. Kind of the opening to the pocket. <laughs> Come on, I just want to feel a thump. Thump and he's fighting. Thump and he's swimming. Probably a little deeper water there. Two, three, four. Yeah, five feet. Gosh, man. It's just weird. This doesn't. This doesn't make any sense how there's fish there and there, but on the shallow stuff, not here. It blows my mind. It blows my mind enough that I think I'm going to do what I said I was going to do, which is leave the big camera here and just go exploring just, just as fast as I can. Because I'm not here to waste y'all's time, and I'm not here to waste my time either. And so I don't want to keep fishing slow if, if that's not the deal, if that's not the juice. So... I'm going to actually just bring the vibrating jig and the creature bait as well as the pack of creature baits. We're going to turn this camera off, be back, be back here for the outro, but uh, take this sucker with me and beat the bank. And I, I'm taking the vibrating jig and not the spinner bait, I think because I can cover water a little bit faster with this. Just a little bit faster. Still catch them shallow I think, but I can fish faster. I know I said go slow, 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 but now I don't have a reaction bait, so my Texas rig's gotta be the reaction bait. Oh gosh, holy cow, it was a fish. It was a bass. There was a bass here. No way. Got him, got him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get in here, baby. Okay, so we got down to some, some better looking bank that wasn't so shallow, a little bit steeper. Let's go. Just a few casts in with the Texas rig. Got us one, baby. Okay, that gives me confidence for this next 100 yards here. There's probably a few fish to be caught. Let's get it. Let's get it, baby. Well, despite my best efforts, that was my last fish of the day. And honestly, it was, it's kind of mind boggling that I caught the majority. I'm like 90, 95% of my fish in like a 200 300 yard stretch and then the rest of the pond almost nothing almost no bites and especially no size to the fish so my theory on that is that uh, one of two things that it's either sh deeper in the areas where i caught them or the bottom composition is different sorry the wind is crazy and because of the bottom composition difference that's where all the fish are right now because it is around the spawn here in the spring so lots to learn hopefully y'all enjoyed if you did hit the subscribe button and if you want to see my previous two uncuts they're going to be here in the corner uh the long longer y'all stay on my channel, the better it does in the algorithm, so I'd appreciate it if y'all would watch those videos. My name's Tyler, it's a pleasure as always, and we'll see you next time right here on TRF.